A cordial greeting. Today is Thursday, September 18, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video I will be giving an update on the cyclonic activity we have in the Atlantic, and I will also talk about several areas that we will be monitoring over the coming weeks given the possibility that several cyclones may form. And although at the moment the Atlantic remains relatively calm, yesterday Tropical Storm Gabrielle formed in the tropical Atlantic, but it is already located around latitude 20 degrees north, which means it does not represent a threat to the Caribbean region. It is forecast to continue moving toward the northwest and north over the next five days, passing just east of Bermuda where they should continue to monitor its evolution. Meanwhile, on the other hand, we have a tropical wave located over the Dominican Republic that is being influenced by a trough in the northeastern Caribbean. This disturbance is bringing heavy downpours over Puerto Rico and the northern Lesser Antilles, and although at the moment it does not have any probabilities of cyclonic development, we will be monitoring it once it moves into sectors of the northern Bahamas, since conditions in that area could be marginally favorable for the development of a low-pressure system. However, for now, the National Hurricane Center has not marked the area with probabilities of cyclonic development, so at the moment the southeastern United States and the Bahamas can remain calm. In addition, we have two tropical waves that we will be monitoring over the coming days as they move westward across the tropical Atlantic. And although conditions at the moment are not very favorable for development, it cannot be ruled out that they might gain some cyclonic organization, especially if in the long term they reach areas of the Western Caribbean Sea, where conditions may definitely be more favorable for development. This is because, unlike the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico regions have plenty of moisture and sea surface temperatures at near record levels for this time of year. In the coming minutes I will comment on how sea surface temperatures are in this area and why it may be a concern toward the end of the hurricane season. Let us now look at the visible satellite animation of Tropical Storm Gabrielle, where we can clearly see where the center of circulation is located. However, something very surprising is that the circulation lacks cloudiness in convective areas, and this is because wind shear from the southwest is affecting the circulation and, in addition, the system is surrounded by extremely dry air that limits the strengthening of this tropical cyclone. And although during the next 24 to 48 hours conditions are not favorable for significant intensification, in the medium and long term, as it moves over the subtropical Atlantic, conditions could become more favorable for it to begin a strengthening process. In fact, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center keeps the system as a tropical storm until at least Sunday, but by Monday and Tuesday, when it passes near or just east of Bermuda, it is forecast to strengthen into the second hurricane of the season. At least the trends have been positive for Bermuda because now it seems it will remain to the east of the island and this cyclone will probably not impact land directly. Now let us look at the visible satellite animation just west of Africa, where we have two tropical waves that we will be monitoring in the coming days, particularly one that is located near the west coast of Africa and which could find marginally favorable conditions to develop into a tropical depression over the next seven days. But any development should be quite slow since dry and stable air continues to dominate the atmospheric conditions between the Caribbean and Africa. That is why the National Hurricane Center maintains a low probability of cyclonic development in the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. At the moment there is a 20% chance of development during the next seven days. These tropical waves will be moving very slowly toward the west. So although at the moment we do not know how far or how close they may pass from the Caribbean, the reality is that they are more than seven days away from reaching longitude 60 degrees west. So again we can remain calm in the Caribbean since there is no short or medium term threat. Now then, as we have discussed over the past few weeks, a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation will be moving through the Atlantic toward the end of September and the beginning of October. And we can see that in the following image, where in green we can see the progress of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which will be located over sectors of the Atlantic and Africa toward the end of September and the beginning of October. So it is very likely that during the coming weeks conditions in the tropical Atlantic will become less hostile for the development of tropical cyclones. In fact, if we look at the long term, the ensemble members of the European model show the possibility of the development of one or two additional cyclones. And although in general tracks would be favored toward the northwest without reaching the Caribbean, the members that keep these tropical waves weaker and eventually carry them into the Caribbean sea zone, some of them show the development of some low-pressure systems. However, this is a long-term forecast and the signal for possible development remains very low at the moment. We could also see the development of a low-pressure system if one of these tropical waves moves over the region. And in fact, the ensemble members of the Google Artificial Intelligence model also showed the development of one or two tropical waves from Africa, and also the possible development of a low-pressure system in the Western Caribbean Sea toward the end of September. 
These are signs that the favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation could give way to the formation of between two and three additional cyclones over the next two to three weeks. And this is why we must continue to be attentive to the hurricane season, particularly when the main cyclogenesis region and particularly the area near the Bahamas, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea, have sea surface temperatures that remain between 1 to 3 degrees Celsius above normal. So our concern is that any cyclone that develops in this area could find favorable conditions for significant strengthening, especially when sea surface temperatures in some areas of the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico are at record levels for the date, particularly in the southern Gulf of Mexico, the western Caribbean Sea, and the region north of the Antilles and the Bahamas. So while at the moment in the Atlantic there are no threats of a direct impact from a tropical cyclone, it is possible that this may change toward the end of September or the beginning of October. Meanwhile, let us enjoy this calm right at the peak of the season. For our followers in western Mexico, soon I will be recording a video to talk about a low-pressure system that could develop into a tropical cyclone and threaten the western coast of Mexico in about 7 to 10 days. Well, that is all for this video. But before I go, I want to invite you to like this video. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope you all have an excellent day. See you later.